Pete from MyJewelryFence.com. Today I'm going to talk about something completely different than watches and jewelry repair. Uh, I want to talk about something that has occurred to me as I do a lot of video editing from the videos that I take of my endeavors fixing jewelry and watches. I wanted to cover something that cropped up on me the other day. Now, most of my videos I edit on a Macintosh using Final Cut Pro. Uh, it's a great system. It's great for video editing. Works really well. But I ran into an issue where uh, the several libraries that I use in Final Cut Pro, and these, these little folders here, these little tabs here are all libraries uh, of videos. Um, I noticed that I was running out of hard drive space, which is kind of crazy because I have six terabytes of hard drive space. I should have tons and tons and tons of empty space on my hard drive. So I was trying to figure out why I was running out of hard drive space. And what I discovered was that Final Cut Pro does something that most of us don't know how to use. And if you don't know how to use it, you're running out of hard drive space and you can't figure out where these files are, I'm going to show you where, where some of your space is getting used. What we're going to do is we're going to create two separate um, two separate libraries, and I'm going to create one project in each library, exactly the same project in both, and I'm going to compare with one of the features of Final Cut Pro. I'm going to show you how, if it's turned on, Final Cut Pro will eat up your hard drive like there's no tomorrow. And if you turn it off, you'll have tons and tons of hard drive space to do as much video editing as you want. Now, this is probably not good for people who do professional editing because uh, I'll explain to you when we get there. But if you're like me and you do tutorial videos on how to do things or small, simple videos, you don't, you don't need to lose your hard drive space to do that. So let's get started. I'm going to go over to Final Cut and hit the File menu, and we're going to create a new library. I'm going to call this uh, Watch Video 1. And I've got a folder open, and this folder is on my desktop, and it's called Videos. And I'm going to save that library there. Okay, so if we look in the Videos folder, you can see here's my original video that I'm going to use to create this project. And here's my library file. Now, right now, the library file is 181K, which, you know, you're going to look at me and say, wow, that's fantastic. It is fantastic. Now, I'm going to just turn on this disastrous thing, and we'll come back to it. So here's my Watch Video 1 library, and here is an empty event. And we'll just call this, we're going to change the name, we're going to call this WV1, Watch Video 1. Okay, so under WV1, I want to import my video. So I'm going to select the video that I have here. It's called SAM0201. It's a short video on a, a little quartz watch repair. So I'm going to import that video. And basically what I'm doing, I have leave copy, leave files in place. If you select under files in Final Cut Pro when you're importing video, if you leave that file in place, it stays in that folder and just gives you a link into your project. It doesn't import the video into your project, it just links it there, which is a good way to save space since you already have the original copy on your hard drive. So I'll go ahead and uh, import that file. And lo and behold, here it is. So now we need a project to do that. So I'm gonna go File, New Project, and we'll just call this uh, Watch Fix 1. And there's my project, Watch Fix 1. I'm going to select that. I'm going to drag my video into the timeline. Oops. Let's drag the video into the timeline. There we go. And I'm going to shorten up my timeline so that we can see the whole video. Okay, so there's my entire video clip on the bottom of the screen and I I often add music to my videos not everybody does but I do so I want to see what's going to happen here I'm going to go over to the music button here in the upper left corner I'm going to select uh, 
little jingle here. We'll let's see what this one's like. That's one. I'll grab this one. And I'm going to drag a copy of that here. And normally I have the video play through or the music play throughout the whole video. I just lower the volume for that particular audio clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make two instances of this. I'm going to copy the music file and then paste it. And I just kind of stream them together like that. So now I have two copies of the file there for the music. I have my video file where I have my uh, soundtrack, my audio track built into it. And then I always add a title to it. Usually I have uh, the website logo in the corner. So we're going to go over to the titles tab and I'm going to grab a 3D title and I'm going to put that right there. And then I'm going to drag that for the length of the video because that appears throughout the entire video under normal circumstances. Okay, so there is my project. Very simple project. Let's take a look at the file size in our file explorer or finder. So you'll notice that the original file, the SAM0201, that file size is just under a gig, 939 megabytes. And if you notice here, our watch video one library which right now is 395. Oh, it just jumped up to 527 megabyte. And it's growing, 662 megabyte. Every few seconds, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Up oh, there it is, 778. So you, you kind of sit here and you say to yourself, why is it getting so big? It never ends. Oh, it, now the library is 1.04 gig, 1.17 gig. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The reason for this is that Final Cut Pro, it renders your video for viewing purposes so you can watch your video while you're editing it. And while it does that, it actually grows the library size. If you notice right over here in the upper left corner of Final Cut Pro, there's this little background icon. I'm going to open that up should show us what's going on in the background. Right now it's analyzing and transcoding and it's rendering our video. Now it's not rendering the final version of the video, it's only rendering a better version of an editable copy of the video. So it's only at 24% and if we go back to our file viewer here, you can see we're already up to 2.5 gigabytes. Now. That's two and a half times bigger than the original video, which I did not import into the library. So this is kind of crazy. It just keeps growing. So one of the things that I discovered is the reason I was losing space was because of this background editing or rendering. File Cut Pro likes to do this. Well, this file, this library file for Final Cut, with this simple little project in it, will continue to grow the more I edit this project within this library, as long as the background rendering is turned on. So what you want to do is you want to turn that rendering off. Do not have that turned on as long as you're doing simple video editing. If you're not doing much that's complex uh, or you're editing a movie, you know, that's an hour and a half long and you're going to have tons of video clips, uh, lots of different things going on, different sound effects. If you don't need that, turn it off. And I'm going to show you how to turn it off. And I'm going to show you the difference. Let's go back to this background editing. Let's take a look at it. Right now you can see we're at 46% and the library file is 4.6 or 0.7 gigabytes. It's now five times larger than the original file that I had in there. And remember, Final Cut Pro does not import the clips and the music. It just links to them. Now the titles are a different effect because the titles actually get brought into your project. But that's nothing more than an overlay. Let's go create a new library. So here I've got Watch Video 1. I'm going to let this continue to render out in the background. Um, for instance, simple as this, 
if I select the Blade Tool in Final Cut Pro and I pick anywhere along my timeline and I cut that screen, so now I have a clip here and a clip here, I just made a change. By doing that, it's going to re-render the entire project. And as it re-renders the entire project, that project file grows because it creates more instances of the same editing. So it's not, it's not efficient enough to create one rendered version. It creates multiple rendered versions within that same library. Okay, with that said, let's go create a new project. So I'm going to create actually a new library. And we're going to call this library Watch Video 2. And it's going to be in the same location. It's going to be on our desktop in the videos file. And now you can see that here's my library for Watch Videos 2. And just like the original uh, first version, it's only 180K. Uh, we don't have anything in that project, so there's nothing going on. And if you look closely, you'll see that Watch Video 1 is still growing. Now it's at 6.8 gig, 6.9 gig. So now it's seven times larger than the original video. And it's got a long ways to go. I'm going to bring up this, this background test, and you can see we're only at 41%. It's probably going to get that file up to 10 gigabytes as this background rendering goes on. So here's how we do, here's how we eliminate this problem. Come up to, uh, let's close this, come up to the Final Cut menu, come over to Preferences, and you'll see a Generals tab, an Editing tab, Playback, Import, Destination. Select the Playback. Now you'll see here it says Rendering and then Background Rendering, and it'll start after three seconds of inactivity. I'm going to turn that off and then close this folder. <clears throat> now what's happened is I've told Final Cut Pro to stop rendering while I'm editing. Let's take a look at the second version of this pro of, uh, of our project. I'm going to go ahead and import my video, just like I did the first time. There it is. I'm going to come over and select the same music file. Oh, we got to create a, let's go back here. We have to create a project. So let's go to File, New Project. And we're going to call this the, uh, we'll call this uh, Watch Video 2. And there's our project file right here. I'm going to grab my video and drag it down. <clears throat> Again, I want to make this small so that it fits into the screen. And there we go. Now I'm going to grab the music files that we use in the second and the first version. We're going to copy those into the second version. Again, we'll create two instances of that music overlay. And let's not forget the all important title. Grab my title, bring it down here, and we'll just drag it all the way across. So there is the same project in a different library, but rendering has been turned off. Now if I come over to my file, uh, File Explorer or Finder, you'll see Watch Video 1, which was generated with the background rendering turned on. It, I stopped it at 8.4 gigabytes, pretty much eight and a half times larger than our original file. Watch video two, that library is 4.1 megabytes. It's tiny. It's insignificant amount of space compared to the 8.43 gigabytes. So if you don't need the render in background, the render in the background while you're editing, turn that off and save space. Here's the problem that I also ran into. I have lots of videos on my computer in a whole group of different libraries and they all take up huge amounts of space and I just didn't want to go ahead and delete all those libraries so there's a trick to getting rid of those so for instance if we look at watch video one bundle and you see it's 8.43 gigabytes where if the rendering was turned off it would only be 4.1 megabytes how do we resize this 
file to make it small enough where we want to keep it. Now, if I go back to my libraries and I come down to watch video one and we select that project, it's exactly the same as the second version we created. The only difference is this library is what? 200 times larger. So there is a way to eliminate or remove those background remedying, uh, renderings from this file and make that file smaller. And how we do it is this. Select the video library that you want to remove those renderings from. Then come up to the file menu and select delete generated library files. So if I click on that, it's going to ask me which do I want to delete. I'm going to select delete all the rendered files. Used only or all, I'm going to select all. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now, I've pretty much just removed all the rendered files from this particular library, evident by going back to the finder, looking at the watch videos one, is 5.1 megabytes now instead of 8.4 gigabytes and it closely matches the second version of that same library at 4.7 megabytes. So guys if you're running out of video space on your computer using Final Cut Pro that is how you can save a ton of file storage on your hard drives. So try this trick it may work well for you it's working well for me I'm saving space. I can still edit my videos uh, insignificantly slower. I can't tell, but again, I'm doing you know 10, 12, 20 minute videos. I'm not editing a whole movie. So uh, if if you're a professional and you're using this, you may want to keep that on. If you're like me and you do instructional videos or fun videos or things like that, you don't need that on. Save the file space. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you guys. Have a good day.